you've seen the video title and I did the thing where I got in the car to drive somewhere because I'm gonna go pick up something that I've kind of wanted for a long time now there's a bit of a, a backstory with this so a couple weeks ago my cousin who lives in Canberra hit me up and said hey on Facebook marketplace there's a Power Mac G5 dual CPU for $65 and I was like get it I want it so he gave me the serial number I did some research after he bought it because I, I want it anyway because uh, I may or may not got that one to do like a, a mod but I, I kind of wanted one that had PCIe so after that I went on eBay and I was looking at some listings and then there was this one auction on eBay now I, I basically never use eBay for anything so I decided you know what I'm gonna put this to add this to my watch list right as the story goes I got a notification yesterday afternoon saying there's 12 minutes left on this auction turns out that I won an auction for a dual CPU G5 with PCIe, eight and a half gigs of RAM, no storage, don't need any of that. It's got SATA, so I put my own drives in it. And I know it's not like the typical type of content that we do on the channel, but I mean, like we do retro stuff and that kind of stuff every now and again, but this is just something I wanted to share with you guys because th this alternative kind of tech, I've always really loved it. So that's why like when the M1 Max came out, I really liked it because it wasn't Intel based and it was a different architecture and PowerPC Max, I loved them just because they were different. So I'm gonna build myself, well, I mean, it's it's already built, but I'm gonna upgrade this stuff within an inch of its life and try and make it as modern as humanly possible. So yeah, we're on our way now to go and pick up this system on the other side of Sydney. It's actually on the Northern beaches. It's about 40 minutes and change. So come with us while I go and pick up this Power Mac G5 Dual 2 gigahertz. Now it doesn't sound like much and you know, you're probably asking yourself how much did you pay for it? We'll get to that because the price I got it for is uh, pretty good given how expensive Power PC Macs have become. I've seen G4s and Quicksilver G4s that are double the price of this. So I've got, I got a really good deal on this. I can't believe that I won the auction in that last 12 minutes. So yeah, let's go, let's go and, and, and pick it up and see what the deal is. I'm very excited. <laughs> Here it is. Ooh, it's very heavy. Precious cargo. I haven't actually even powered it on, so I'm gonna do it with you guys before we do anything else to figure out if this thing actually works and to see whether or not I wasted money. Hopefully, I didn't waste a cent on this. I'm actually kind of excited about it and we'll get it up on the table in a sec and we'll test it out. But this monitor, I just wanna say, this has got inputs for everything, but I couldn't find my DVI cable, but I have an HDMI to DVI cable that I was using for other stuff years ago, so. We'll see if this all works. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it works. It should work. We'll, we'll, we'll power this up together and just find out, right? It is super duper heavy. Oh, oh, oh. I forgot how heavy these things were. Last night when I popped the case open to have a look, it was the PCIe version and there was a 120 gig SSD in here. So I don't know if this is gonna boot up into someone else's OS. Uh, if it's personal information, I'll just blur it out or do whatever. But yeah, we're gonna plug it all up and see see what happens. The anticipation is probably killing you as much as it's killing me. Not gonna plug in any ethernet because I don't know like if there's stuff on here that's gonna phone home. So I don't really wanna do that on our network just yet. Plug in a USB mouse and keyboard combo. Uh, DVI cable, wow, it's been a hot minute since I've used one of these. The, G the graphics card's looking a bit rusty, which is fine, I mean, it, it's, it's how it is with stuff this age and the power cable. Alrighty, now for the moment of truth. Make the chime, or oh, maybe he's disabled the chime. There's the chime. Chime equals good things. These older Macs sometimes take a little bit longer to display stuff. So we'll just, we'll just wait. Just made a popping sound. Chime's usually a good sound. Oh, 
There it is. Hey, it's got a fresh install of macOS. Oh, nice. It works. This guy's actually done a fresh install. This kind of saves me doing an install, but I'm going to do a fresh install with you guys as well because I'm fairly certain it's something you want to witness. Look at that. I, this is so cool. What a legend. Fresh install. We are in Australia. I'm actually not going to go ahead and plug in Ethernet just yet. I'll do it when I've got my own fresh installation media. I think we can do the old command Q to skip this. Yep, see, old school. See, Nick knows stuff about Macs too. Uh, time zone, we are in. Not Numea, not Brisbane. Sydney, This is, it's definitely not 2008. We'll just do it for now just to get in and see what the hardware is. I'm just curious about the, the whole configuration of the system, like what's actually in here. So because this is DVI to HDMI, I, I, I think the maximum resolution we're gonna get out of this thing is 1080p. Even with this graphics card, the max it will probably do is 1080p with the output it's got. I'm gonna remedy that, don't you worry. So I mean, it, it seems to be nice and accelerated, which is a good sign. But let's find out with about this Mac. I don't care about the serial number of this machine or whatever. Who cares, right? So it's a dual 2 gigahertz G5 with 8.5 gigs of RAM. This is running 10.5.6, which is not the latest revision, but that's no problem. I've got a 10.5.6 installer, which we're going to do. Then we're going to update it to the latest, latest version. We'll bang on more info and we'll take a look at the graphics and displays. So it's got a G4660 LE. It's a PCIe card and it's a by 16 card with a total of 128 megs of RAM. Uh, actually, we can probably bump that resolution up. Let's, let's do that really quickly. If, if this cable gives us sync at 1080p. Okay, we've got 1080p. That's looking much, much nicer. Hardware accelerated. It's running Quartz Extreme. Quartz Extreme is like the rendering engine for this era of PowerPC. Did the RAM configuration. So it's got two two gig sticks four one gig sticks and two 256 meg sticks. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna go hunting. Don't know what the max RAM configuration of this machine is, but it's gonna be more than whatever this is. It's probably like 16 gigs or something. So we're gonna completely max this system out as hard and as far as it will go. So this one as well has dual gigabit ethernet or just zoom in a bit more, dual gigabit ethernet, which is nice. This graphics card is pretty meh so we'll change that out but the the beauty is it's pcie so we we actually have some options and i have some older cards flashing the bios on them that will actually support this machine so we'll go through all of that in another video but yeah we're just investigating to see what the story is with this because i'm just i'm kind of i'm kind of excited so does this have wi-fi no wi-fi which is okay I don't need it. So that's basically the hardware configuration of it. The guy that sold this to me, legend for doing this, but mate, I'm nuking it. Here's my plan. So I'm gonna use this two terabyte Samsung 870 Cuvo. Uh, I couldn't restore the disc, it was just being weird and I just don't really have time to try and troubleshoot and figure it out. So what I'm gonna do is use our old friend, Carbon Copy Cloner, and I'm going to clone this install that's already on this machine to this new two terabyte drive because I did some investigating and some testing and some stuff and yeah, it's a clean install. So there's nothing dodgy about the installer on here. So I'm gonna chuck this drive in and then we're gonna clone it to this. Side panels on these are really easy to pop off. So they've got this little latch and you just lift it up and pop off the side panel and you're in. There appears to be another SATA cable just flopping about in there. so. There's not much slack on it, but we, we'll, we'll make it work. Don't worry, we'll make it work, so. Okay, this is real ghetto, but we'll pull this original drive out and we'll keep it as, a, as an archive or a backup of a clean installer if we need it again another time. But for now, we'll just plug that in and power it back on. These things are already complaining at me saying, hey, I don't know what to do with this. We'll just initialize the disk. We'll have to, we'll have to partition it. We'll go one partition. We'll just have to set it up as Apple partition map. 
that was pretty painless. So I've got a DMG of an old version of Carbon Copy Cleaner that should work on PowerPC. Hopefully this works and we'll just go zoop. We'll see what happens. Carbon Copy Cleaner, blah, blah, blah. No, so we go source, OS 10, untitled, and we will hit clone. This might take a while, so obviously I'm, you, you're not gonna sit here with me as this goes on, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I've always been a really big fan of all alternate Macs that aren't x86, so I'm talking about any Intel Macs, they never really interested me because I could build a Hackintosh and just do anything on any PC hardware would be fine. So Power PC Macs have always really interested me. I've had heaps and heaps of them. I've had a bunch of G5s over the years, like these towers that I've used for modding and a lot of the ones that I had ended up just being faulty, like I'd use them for a little bit and they were faulty. So I've never really had one in a really nice working condition. So that's the first reason. The second reason is, as I mentioned, like Intel Macs are boring. That's why I've got an M1 Mac and a Power PC Mac nothing in between. Intel Macs were just really boring to me. They never really interested me because I like that alternate type of CPU and architecture and stuff. That's just how I am. If it's gonna be a PC with an Apple badge on it, you know, I could just build a PC. Another reason for this one in particular, now I said this was a dual processor version. It turns out it's a dual core version. Not much difference between the two other than two physical CPUs or two CPU cores, but realistically the same thing. This one has PCIe, so it gives me a lot of room to tinker with things and play with things that I currently have, right? And I know you're thinking, oh, nothing's gonna work. We'll see about that. We'll make stuff work. It's gonna be a fun little bit of tinkering for me to do videos on and in my spare time. The other thing I wanted to do was I wanted to completely max this out. So I've already put a two terabyte Samsung SSD in here. This will take up the 16 gigs of RAM, so I'm gonna completely max that out, take some DDR2 memory, so I'm gonna go balls to wall with that. I'm also looking at different video card options at the moment as well. I like maybe a Quadro will go in there, or just like something for its day that was just completely beasty, and yeah, I just wanna make this the ultimate version of what it could have been back then, so. That, that, that's the other thing. Now, one of the big things I haven't talked about yet, I don't think I've talked about this yet, but is how much I actually paid for this when I won it on the eBay auction. So these buy it now in Australia at the moment, any G5 Power Mac, dual core, single core, whatever, they start at least 400 Aussie dollars and they'll go upwards because people are collecting these things. I got lucky and I picked this system up for 175 Aussie dollars, which is ridiculous. Now, I think I mentioned when I filmed the other section yesterday that my cousin got me a $60 one of Facebook Marketplace with the dual CPU, that's an AGP version of it. So I'm gonna be tinkering with that one as well, but this one is going to be like the ultimate Power Mac G5 wheel, well, a, a, a two gigahertz dual core version anyway, not the, the quad core version. That's a little bit harder to come by. If I do happen to stumble across a quad core version at a decent price, I'm gonna scoop that up. I wanna show you guys and introduce you guys to stuff like Morph OS, like just alternate operating systems, stuff I can use this for on kernel control because I'm gonna do some Linux stuff with it as well. And just a different way of thinking about computing, especially if you're not gaming and you wanna tinker. A lot of people collect this older stuff, so it's a nice way to dip your fingers in it. I've got a long history with tinkering with old Macs and stuff as well that I've never, I, I, I've talked about it a little bit on the channel, but I've had plenty of like G4s, G3s, couple G5s and all that stuff over the years. So I just wanna like go down this path and play with these Macs. The last reason for this machine in particular is I've, this is, this is ridiculous, right? I've got a bunch of old DV tapes, like from my skateboarding days and Hi8 tapes and all that stuff. 
and I want a computer I can use to capture that stuff, right? Without having to, you know, put a Firewire card in my editing PC or whatnot. This has got everything built in, so I'm gonna use this as a Firewire capture PC for all that old stuff, so I can archive a bunch of stuff that I've got as well. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I do in my real life that isn't related to YouTube, but all the archive skateboarding footage and stuff like that's gonna be put on that channel that I use to upload my lifestyle and skateboarding stuff that I make every week or so. I stopped for a while when we were in lockdown, but I started again a couple weeks ago, so I'm regular on the other channel again as well. So there, yeah, that, that's just about gonna do it. If you're interested in seeing a series like this, let me know, because I need to know if this is what you guys wanna see. Regardless of if you wanna see it, I'm still gonna make it because it interests me, and I figured, you know, there'll be some people out there who like seeing this kind of stuff. Anyways, guys, that's just about gonna do it for me for today. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek, we seek. Maybe before I clean the inside of this computer, because I'm gonna like do a complete tear down and clean in the next part, maybe we'll do a little bit of like cinematic B-roll. Because it would look kinda cool, right? Maybe, I don't know. Thanks for watching.